In this installment of Washington Legal Foundation's Legally Brief, Thomas Gorman, a partner with the law firm Porter Wright Morrison Arthur and author of the SEC Actions blog, will discuss how the Dodd-Frank Financial Services Reform Law impacts enforcement at the Securities and Exchange Commission. Good afternoon. Thank you, Glenn. The Dodd-Frank bill is probably the most significant financial bill to pass the Congress since the Great Depression when the securities laws were regulated or written back in the 1930s. For SEC enforcement in particular, it has a huge impact. But one of the things that's critical about this bill and that everybody needs to remember is you need to look at the text today to see the impact, but you need to look to the future, to the regulations, dozens of regulations being written and dozens of studies being written which may generate even more legislation and more modifications to the law. For SEC enforcement in particular, it's going to be a very busy time at the, at the commission. There's a number of provisions there that cover just a vast array of uh, areas of the securities laws that impact their enforcement program, such as the right to now subpoena people nationwide in district court cases, something they didn't have before and something that will facilitate proof in their district court cases. They now can regulate hedge funds, something they've long tried to do. They now have additional authority over credit rating agencies, a very important area uh, that was at the center of the market crisis, and for the first time they really have full regulatory authority here. If you focus down into the enforcement division, however, there are three key things that you should look at. First, aiding and abetting. That's been a problem since the Supreme Court's decision in Central Bank back in 1994. 1995, the Commission got a partial fix on aiding and abetting, adding it to the Exchange Act, but they've suffered from a string of court decisions that have inconsistently applied the knowledge requirements, sometimes reckless, sometimes knowing conduct was required. Now, this statute expands aiding and abetting to cover all of the securities laws, and it harmonizes the knowledge component dropping it down to reckless conduct from where in some instances before they had to prove actual knowledge. Second area that's impacted is penalties. Previously, the SEC could obtain penalties in district court cases. They had very limited authority otherwise, however. Now, under Dodd-Frank, they can seek monetary penalties in any administrative proceeding, which should spur the use of administrative proceedings as another part of their enforcement program. Final area to look at, extraterritorial application. Morrison, decided by the Supreme Court last term, largely limited the scope of Section 10B, the key anti-fraud provision, to the exchanges and the United States, cu cutting out foreign issuers and a lot of foreign shareholders and foreign transactions for the most part. Under, under the bill, the Department of Justice and the SEC, but not private plaintiffs, will now be able to reach uh, uh, transactions that are outside the United States, basically on an effects kind of test if there are effects in the United States so that foreign issuers, foreign transactions, foreign plaintiffs may now be within the reach of the SEC. So, Dodd-Frank on the whole expands the SEC's authority in the enforcement program. For the future, three key areas to look at. Studies that are being done in addition to the rules and regulations being written, and these studies may be critical. One study focuses on aiding and abetting and says, should aiding and abetting be extended to private plaintiffs? This would be a huge difference for private plaintiffs, something the courts have struggled with for a long period of time. A, sec a second question, fiduciary duties. Fiduciary duties for brokers and dealers harmonize with what investment advisors have. This is a pet project of Chairman Mary Shapiro. Look for this study to come out, and this again could make a big difference. Finally, extraterritorial application. As I said before, the new provisions in Dodd-Frank extend extraterritorial application for DOJ and SEC, not private plaintiffs. The SEC is doing a study to see if, in fact, those provisions should be extended for private plaintiffs. Also, again, could be a huge difference in the application of the securities laws in the, in the private damage actions. So overall, again, a very significant piece of legislation expanding SEC enforcement authority, perhaps in the future, expanding the reach of private damage actions. Thank you.